there welcome to the final video for now on the five pillars of islam this work on hajj um it's probably going to take you about two to three lessons worth of work it's a bit of a meaty topic because it comes into lots and lots of things that we've already covered so stick with this i've tried to mix it up a little bit and i've tried to make sure that um even those of you who haven't got very good ict access can can uh, manage to do it so uh, when you've done the title, Hajj, okay, for your starter, you do need to write this down. I just want you to have a think about a place that's got real significance to you or your family. It might be a place that you've gone to that's really special to you. It might be a family um, memory attached to it. Somewhere that really is a really special place. Because for you to really understand Hajj, you have to start that understanding of something that is a place that's important to you. Okay, so what I want you to do next is to consider why Muslims want to go to Mecca. Um, because it's not just about the pillar of Hajj, but there's reference to other pillars that we've already covered. So have a little think, press pause and see if you can work out which of these pillars are important to Muslims. Okay, press pause. Okay, did you get it? So if you talked about Salah, prayer, then absolutely bang on. Remember that Hajj is also, and Mecca is also important to Muslims because it is where Islam really originated in its truest form. The Prophet Muhammad was born in Mecca. And also, as we know, the Quran was revealed, uh, the, the revelation started in Mecca. And also the Kaaba, that black box that Muslims pray towards every single day is in Mecca. So going to Mecca is like a massive, massive deal for Muslims. It's such an important place to them. Okay. So a little bit geography here, a little bit of multitasking. So if you have a little look at where we are in the world, so this is the Middle East here, okay? Um, and I want you to see if you can spot where Mecca is. Okay, did you see it? Now, sometimes you'll see, you'll see on this map that Mecca can be spelled M-E-C-C-A, like Mecca Bingo. We prefer, and the exam will prefer Mecca spelled like this. And a little bit of trivia for you folks, it's 3,997 miles away from Gloucester. So if you're watching this in Gloucester, um, then that's how far it is. Now, some people will have to save a whole lifetime to be able to go here. But obviously, if you live around the corner, you've got, you can go as many times as you like. And um, what you can't see over my big head is that Hajj takes place from the 8th to the um, 15th uh, day of Dhul Hijjah. Okay, now Dhul Hijjah is the month when Hajj has to take place. If a Muslim goes to Mecca at any other time of year, which they are welcome to do, then it doesn't count as a Hajj. It counts as an Umrah. U-M-R-A-H, a lesser pilgrimage. For it to count as a true heart, you have to go at this time, okay? Another thing to remember is that unless you're a Muslim, you can't actually enter Mecca. It is a closed city, it has border, and only people who are practicing Muslims are allowed to go there. You might wonder how you can prove that. Well, you have a special visa that you have an imam from your mosque, so the religious leader of mosque, and he verifies that you are a practicing Muslim and that's how you get into Mecca. So, before pilgrims even enter Mecca, there are special preparations that they have to make. And I'm sure if you've ever been on a trip, on a holiday, you'll do your packing, you might tidy the house, you might empty the bins, there's certain things you do. Now, for Muslims, they have certain preparations. As we've discussed, the, you have to be a Muslim to go into Hajj, to go into Mecca. Now, you're only allowed to complete Hajj if you're of sound mind. So if you are suffering with a mental illness, then you don't have, you, you shouldn't take part in Hajj. You have to be physically fit because actually people die completing Hajj every year. It's really, 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 really difficult to do. The heat, the crowds, dehydration, sunstroke, these risks are really real. And also, sadly, some pilgrims have been crushed to death because literally there's so many people there. You also aren't allowed to complete Hajj if it means that going puts the family you're leaving behind in some kind of physical 
um, strain or um, financial strain. So if you've got young children, for example, you can't just go off on Hajj and leave them. And if you haven't got any money, you wouldn't be expected to go on Hajj if it meant your family went without. You also have to be able to afford to go on Hajj without getting yourself into debt. OK, now, at this point, and I do apologise for the noise, um, we are going to be looking at each of the stages of Hajj. OK, now I've done this in two ways. The first bit of the task, I have found that the recommended clips. Now, one is BBC. So I think you should be able to access these. It's the BBC belief files on Hajj. OK, now, if it asks you for an iPlayer account and you, your parents don't have one or care, that's absolutely fine. If you go onto YouTube and search for the belief files Hajj episodes, then you should be able to access those. If not, obviously, the direct link on the website that I've put onto the next slide. There's also a really great series on Channel 4 On Demand um, called Hajj the Great so that's that one there and again you'll need a, a channel 4 od account now don't panic if you don't have access to either of these the information on the slide slides to follow will also help so the absolute ideal is to watch these clips first they won't take you too long i think all of these are about 20 minutes in total and this is about the same so it's not going to take you an overly long you don't have to do it all in one go is you're going to use this information on the subsequent slides. OK, now I've tried to put in pictures as well, just to kind of make it a little bit more interesting. And as you can see, going through here, loads and loads of information about Hajj. And basically, the idea is um, you can use this to fill in your booklet. Now, if you're finding the booklet a bit more of a problem if your your notes you want to write things and it's not easy to kind of find which section then it's not a problem what you need to have is an account of what the pilgrims do on Hajj from start to finish okay so if you wanted to do that as a powerpoint if you wanted to do that as a leaflet and do something creative that's absolutely fine the information on the clips but also powerpoint all of that information now, there's two aspects to Hajj that's important. So I'm just clicking through here all of the sections of Hajj, OK, um, which literally tells you step by step what the pilgrims do with pictures. OK, now you'll remember me talking to you on the last video on Soam um, about Eid or Fitr, which is a festival celebrated at the end of Ramadan. Don't confuse that with this festival, Eid al Adha, which is the festival of sacrifice. The way I remember it is Eid al Fitr F for fasting, so the one for Ramadan, and this festival, Eid al Adha. Um, a for animals, okay, and you'll see here the animal, the festival of sacrifice, okay. Now, just remember that what Muslims don't do on Hajj, they don't, it doesn't turn into a bloodbath at this point, and they don't all sit on the sides sacrificing goats and sheep all over the shop. They would just use like a butcher and they would order their meat so it's slaughtered before they pick it up. Okay. Um, there is here this task on the Ummah and the Hajj is really important because this concept of equality we're going to come back time and time again within this course so to have this understanding would be really useful um, and this lady here is pulling up this will be her husband or brother this will be a family member um, and she's helping him to climb up onto the hill okay so it, <laughs> she's not like he's not clinging on to her dear life and she's going to drop him into a crevice that's what's going now, the other thing, which isn't on here, and I'm just going to hold this up, um, I'm I put these, some of you who were in the last week of term will have this Hajj, um, it would help if I had it the right way up, wouldn't it, this Hajj worksheet, these are photocopies from a textbook, okay, so if you can see that there, I will also put these on to show my homework, and these are really good for that understanding of why pilgrims do what they do at every stage. Because there's two elements here. There's the knowing what the pilgrims do, so the descriptive element, like what do pilgrims do on Hajj. But for each stage, you need to know why they do it. So why do pilgrims make the stand at Arafat? Why do pilgrims, what's the stories behind them? And that's all on this um, photocopy, okay? And again, what you can do, 
you can either complete that task like using the answering the questions at the bottom of the sheet but i would certainly especially page 128 that one there you know, this information in this table is incredibly important. If you have got access to a printer, of course, you can always print that out, highlight it and do it that way if you prefer. OK, now this marks the end of this sequence on the five pillars of Islam. All right. So look out and show my homework for the next section. What we're going to do is spend some more time looking at recall um, and reviewing what we've done so far in the course rather than lots of new knowledge at this point. OK, so I hope that helps if you want to send me what you've done so I can check it. If that helps you with accountability, um, then please do. And thank you so much for tuning in. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. Keep safe.